Hello everyone, uh, welcome back. So in this video tutorial, we'll see uh, group capacity of pile. So what is group capacity? Usually when you have a pile, uh, piles are not provided. Like for example, if the pile is being used as a foundation for a building. So in that case, we don't provide individual or single pile. We provide multiple piles. So when we provide these multiple number of piles, and if they are close uh, to each other, then they behave as a group. So when you calculate the bearing capacity of this pile, you don't calculate like let's say there are 10 piles. So you calculate capacity of one pile, then you multiply it by 10. So that's not how it works. So what we have to do in that case, when these piles are like, uh, let's say the spacing of the pile. So what is spacing? We'll come to know later on. So for example, uh, if the spacing of the pile is anything uh, between two to four times of the diameter, of the pile in that case in that case pile behaves as an as a group okay so uh, we'll uh, in this video tutorial we'll see how to calculate uh, capacity of pile in the group so there are two different cases i'll make two separate videos for this so first case is uh, pile group in a sand another case is pile group in a clay so this video tutorial we'll see pile group in a sand so uh, capacity of pile uh, in a granular soil. So before we go ahead, what you should do is uh, there is a video I have already made that is the capacity of individual pile in the sand. You should go and check out that video first then and then you should come to that video. So this is the link and if you want on my channel, uh, you can let's say, let me show you. So this is a video pile foundation part four. You can go and watch this video first then come to this video, then you will understand it in a much better way. Anyways, let's go ahead. I assume you already seen it. So the equation, uh, we will not go into the uh, theory how the equation come. I'll directly give you the equation and we'll take one numerical and try to explain you each and every part of this equation. So this is the capacity of pile in a group if the pile is in sand. So clay will have a different equation. So the equation is very uh, simple uh, q dash nq into ab plus half ks sigma average tan delta into asb what are all of these will come to know in the numerical one by one okay so let's see one numerical so this is the numerical that is given in the question bank in mumbai university so what is the numerical numerical is fairly simple uh, nine pile group arranged in a square pattern is used as a foundation for a column in a sand phi equals to 32 degree and q 27 diameter of pile is given and uh, there are a few more other things are given and we also have the unit weight of soil which is given what we have to do we have to do two things we have to first calculate the ultimate load capacity this one of the pile in group and show the arrangement of the pile so this is this one is quite easier showing the arrangement uh, let's look at the given data phi is given and q is given D is given in mm, so I have converted that into meter. Spacing of the pile is given. What is spacing? I'll tell you later on. So again, I have converted into meter. Gamma is given, L is given. So this is the length of the pile. Uh, what is this LC? LC is called as a critical depth. What is critical depth? You will find out in the video that I've mentioned you. So go and watch that video, then you will understand what is LC. So LC is nothing but 15 times of diameter that is 15 into 0.3 that is 4.5 okay so uh, this is the arrangement of the pile so basically what you have the number of piles are nine so if you count you have one two three a group of three arranged in this way so total nine piles are there so you have the spacing s equals to 900 mm so spacing is nothing but center to center distance between the piles so this is this spacing is 0.9 this spacing is 0.9 and uh, what else is there yeah so this uh, entire arrangement of the piles is called as a pile block so let's say the capital b is the width of the pile block as it is a square arrangement b will be same on both sides so if you want to determine let's say area of the block it will be obviously equals to b into b that is b square so this is the arrangement so this part is done over here let me remove all of this let's go and solve this numerical so 
another part that i have assumed over here is the value of ks what is that ks again it is a part from the individual pile you will have to watch that video to understand what is ks okay so i have shown the spacing on both side this is my formula for group capacity of pile q dash into nq into apb so let's try to determine each one of these one by one first thing we'll determine q dash q dash is nothing but the effective overburden pressure so that can be calculated using gamma into lc so gamma is 18 lc we already know that is 4.5 so you get the q dash equals to 18 into 4.5 that is 81 kilo per meter square next is apb this is area of pile block a stand for area p stand for pile b stand for block so area of pile block obviously will be equals to b into b that is b square now the question is how do we determine the value of b it's very simple so you can just add this s plus this s that is 2s plus a remaining of this portion so this will be d by 2 from the top d by 2 from the bottom so your b will be equals to 2s top d by 2 plus bottom d by 2 that's very easy so your b will be equals to 2.1 meters that's why your area of pile block b square will be square of 2.1 that is 4.41 meter square and next is asb what is asb this asb this area of surface area of the pile block so this pile block so what you are looking at right now is the top view of the pile block so it has a length of 10 meters of course we are not going to end take the entire length because there is a something called as critical length theory so this is surface area how do we determine the surface area first we take the perimeter so perimeter will be equals to this side of b plus this side of b plus this side of b plus this side of b so that is four times of b plus length of the pile sorry multiply by length of the pile so perimeter multiply by the length of the pile will give you the surface area of the pile block so what i am doing is asb equal to four times of b that is what i explained you multiply by the length of the pile block instead of taking the entire 10 meter length i am only taking the critical length in some videos on youtube or in some books i have seen they have taken the full length that is l but that is not how this numerical should be done that is totally a wrong way of doing this numerical so right way is to just take the critical length so 4 times of b into lc so that gives you 4 into 2.1 into 4.5 that is 37.8 meters square so this is how we determine these three values you are determined q dash uh, asb and apb so these three things are done rest will determine uh, later on okay let's see next uh, this is your total length l now what we are doing we are determining the value of sigma average so in this equation you are seeing there is something called a sigma average so this sigma average is nothing but uh, in order to determine that you need to plot the stress distribution that is happening inside a pile so let's say you have 10 meters of the pile then what happened lc is the critical depth where your uh, stresses keep on increasing in a triangular manner so what is happening from this point to this point till the lc your critical depth your stresses uh, are increasing after that what is happening your stress remains constant so once this line lc is crossed you have uh, equal distribution there is no incre increment in the uh, lateral stresses or vertical stresses <coughs> so uh, this stress at the top obviously it is zero and at this level it is your q dash so q dash equals to 81 which we already calculated so the average sigma av is nothing but the average so how do you take the average for the part one that will be equals to zero plus 81 divided by 2 so that is what you see over, over here 0 plus 81 divided by 2 second average will be this 81 plus this bottom 81 divided by 2 so 81 plus 81 by 2 so your sigma average will be this 40.5 plus this 81 so this is how you determine the sigma average 
So once you got the sigma average, the what we have got so far, Q dash, we already know the NQ, APB, KS we are assuming as a 1 because it is not given in the numerical, sigma average we are determined, ASB we are determined. So the only thing that is remaining over here is a tan delta. The value of delta is not given. So in that case, what you will do, what you can do is take the value of delta as 0.7 times of 5. Pi is given 32. So what I'll do is delta equals to 0 0.7 times of 5. Remember, if uh, delta is given in the numerical, take as it is. If it is not given, take anything between 0 0.5, 0 0.5 to 0 0.7 times of 5. So uh, that way you, you get tan delta equals to 0 0.41. So now I have all the values I need in order to calculate the QUG. So QUG will be equals to just, I have just put all the values that I have calculated. So once you do the calculation, you get the value of QUG as uh, 10586.17 kilonewton per meter square. Of course, it is a bearing capacity. So its unit will be in kilonewton per meter square. So this is how you determine the capacity of pile in group if the pile is embedded inside a sand. So there will be another video uh, that we'll do on if uh, group capacity of pile in clay then there will be another video on um, group efficiency of pile. So whenever I upload, uh, you can see somewhere in the bottom. Anyways, take care.